Hey guys, so I am sitting downstairs back to drawing again, and I'm going to go ahead and apologize for the noise that you're going to hear on the floor and the laughter and all of that good stuff. My studio is downstairs now, and so the children are running around upstairs playing with dad, and <laughs> you hear pitter-patter of little feet on the floor. So, I love the sound, but I'm sure you guys might not want to hear it. So just ignore it for a few minutes. But I thought I would do a video now that I have revealed I am a full-time artist and kind of talk about why I decided to do full art full-time and talk a little bit about some of the kinks that I'm going through with my wrist after surgery. Um... And all that good stuff. So, I have loved art for a long time. Like, whenever I was little, all these other kids would be gone with their friends or whatever as a teenager. And I did never want to do that. And so, I would go to the library and rent books about how to draw. And I would come home and do the exercises. And that's how I primarily learn to draw. I think my biggest moment in my life as far as I really want to draw was when I was a little girl. I don't know how old I was. I want to say I was maybe six or seven, but my dad would draw and he would use a pencil and he drew this beautiful picture of a lion and I still have got it somewhere to this day. And he drew a squirrel. And he could look at something and could sketch really well. And I thought, I want to be able to do that. And so even then, I would lay it down and I would trace what my dad had drew. And I think that was like the biggest influential moment as far as if I can pinpoint one time moment about me wanting to be an artist so as I got older I realized that well not realized in my head I couldn't make a living from art everybody was like you need to get a real job quote unquote real job and you need to make money and you're not going to make money from art blah 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 so I did I started working when I was 15 and I have done all kinds of different jobs. So I still kept drawing some even during that time. I drew all the way up through high school and then even with my college degree, I can't talk, I got my retainer in, sorry. Even with my college degree, I took some um, graphic pencil classes. So, I mean, I have drew on and off all my life. Well, I guess it's been, I don't know, maybe three years ago now. One day I thought, I'm going to get a sketchbook and I'm just going to draw a little bit of something every day. And so I did. And I was like, holy crap, why did I quit doing this? I missed this so much. So, I got back to drawing a little bit. Well, whenever I went to college in my classes, my art got, like, a whole lot better, a whole lot faster. Because I understood, you know, how light behaves. I understood where to put shadows. I understand that, you know, not every line is going to be the same stroke or the same color or, you know, whatever. And so, my stuff looked a whole lot better like really fast and I'll try and put a picture here of my portrait before I took a college class and then afterwards and you can see like it improved so much so after that time I just started doing a lot of stuff in sketchbooks and I would post on social media and people would comment how good it was and then I thought, well, I'm going to go to some art galleries and see about, you know, getting involved there. 
And so I did. And um, the lady looked at my art and she was like, you know, this is great, but we don't have room here to sell visual art. And so she referred me to a gallery down the road. And so I went in there and the lady that I met with for the first time, there was colored pencil drawings on the wall. And she was the artist of one of those pieces. And I was instantly hooked. I loved it. And so I come home. I asked enough questions to understand how she learned. And she had to self-taught how to do colored pencil. And so I come home and started watching every single video that I possibly could on YouTube. And I purchased some classes and watched before I even had pencils. Like I couldn't afford the pencils then because I didn't have a paycheck. And so as soon as I payday come I think it was two weeks later I had enough knowledge after watching enough reviews and stuff to know which kind of pencils that I wanted so I bought my colored pencils and did my first piece and really got a huge response of support and people liking it and, and almost immediately I was getting asked for commissions and so then once I was figuring out I could get paid doing it I really was drawing a lot more. So I've been doing colored pencil now for two and a half years. And primarily up until this point, everything that I have done has been commission based. I have done some for just myself for the sake of putting into exhibits. But, um, and then of, of course I've done some personal art, but the majority of what I have done has been um, commissions. So... I just got to realizing I was really going through a hard time with family stuff during this time. And I could not believe how much better I felt when I, you know, sit down and drew. Because it puts you in a headspace that you can't think about anything but what you're doing. You're drawing your art. So, I was spending a lot of time with art because it was winter time. My son has got a health condition and we do not go out very much during the winter months. And so I was doing a lot of drawing. And I think that year I did seven commissions. Um, yeah. And then generally in the spring and summer, I don't draw as much. And then during the fall and winter, I pick back up. And every year I have had commissions except for this order. I'm a whole lot more slack. But it's because I broke my hand back in September of this year, 2020, and had to have surgery on it. And I was unable to really draw for about two months. It was actually two months to the day I was sitting in my living room. I didn't know it at the time. And I got to looking at some of the artwork that I had done in the past. And it just really hit me that it's time. It's time to get back to it. So... I did, and I've been all and off sick pretty good for a couple years now, and I really thought about, you know, that I want to do art full-time, but my son, like I said, his health condition, we have to have health insurance because his medicine is like $1,800 a month without insurance. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Um... It's like $1,800 without insurance. So there is no way that we could afford it if I didn't have insurance. I mean, and even with insurance, the kind of medicine that he's been on in this year, um, there's a $450 copay every month. So I have not, I've been reluctant to leave work because of that issue for the sake solely of health insurance. So, um, I got really sick back in the middle of the year before I broke my wrist. And um, I was out of work for several months because I couldn't sleep and I was having really bad anxiety attacks and migraine headaches. And um, so I was out of work. Well, it come back. Let's see, it was trying to think and draw at the same time. I told you you can't do it. It was 
li literally, I was supposed to go back to work on a Thursday. And I had already talked to my employer and said, look, I'm going to be back. I'm feeling better. And then on Sunday of that week, I was supposed to start work on Thursday. That Sunday before I went back, I fell and broke my wrist. And went to the hospital and had to end up going to the Carolina place, um, the orthopedic doctor. And they told me that there was only a 25% chance of it healing without surgery. Like it, it looked really good at the time after he had said it when I broke it, but he could, um, there was a chance that it could move and then they would have to go in and do surgery anyway and re-break what had grew back and put the pins and stuff in and I just find I said no like I want to get back to drawing and I don't want to have to go through this twice so when I fell I fell it was outside in the afternoon and the first thing I thought of when I fell I knew it was broke before I even turned it around and looked at it but I thought I can't draw and I was more I was crying more because of the fact that I knew I wasn't going to be able to draw than I was from the pain. Now, don't get me wrong. And initially, this was when I was sitting on the ground. The first thought that came through my mind was, I'm not going to be able to draw anymore. And so, I was crying. In, in that moment, it was not from the pain. The pain came later, like 15 minutes later, and... I was in the woods when I fell, and so I was walking out of the woods to the vehicle. My husband and kids were with me, and I had to sit down like three times because the pain was so intense. I felt like I was going to pass out and throw up all at the same time. So, yeah. So, um, trying to thought. There it went. So, I cried at the hospital. Of course, I was in pain. But as long as they weren't messing with me, I was holding it in such a way that it wasn't unbearable. But once I got to the hospital and I was I was totally thinking about not drawing. Totally. Like, that was what was bothering me. Was the fact that I wasn't going to be able to draw. And so... Um, I, I didn't even think about my day job. Like, yeah, I thought about the next day. Crap, I'm supposed to be going back to work now. And I'm not going to get to. And I better call and let them know. But there was no remorse. There was no, oh crap, I can't go back to work. There was no, none of that. I was really upset because I knew I couldn't draw. Um, and as far as. An emotional response, that's what it was. I cried a lot just from the emotional thing than more than the pain. So, after surgery and all that good stuff, I was determined I wasn't going to quit because, like I said, drawing for me and art for me is a mental health thing. And so I was like, I'm not going to quit. I'm not because then I lose my confidence as an artist and... I can't do that. So, I started painting left-handed and I sketched some left-handed. And no, it wasn't phenomenal. And no, it was nowhere near the same quality. And no, I didn't do any um, custom commissions during that time. But, it really and truly helped me identify what I was, what I would miss. Um, if something were to happen like that. And so, with that, I think I really started entertaining even more of the thing about being a full-time artist. And, like I said, I was out of work another additional month. I was already thinking about being a full-time artist before I fell. But, whenever I fell, it kind of sealed the deal that this was for sure something that I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't do it. Like, I would be really, really upset. So, 
um, I went back to work for a while and I started getting sick again, started getting the migraines again. And I just really couldn't quit thinking about, you know, I just, I want to be my own boss. I want to get up every day and feel inspired. And I want to be able to um, raise my three kids without, you know, the workflow responsibility. Like if I've got a doctor's appointment with my son, that has got a health condition. I don't have to ask the boss off. I don't have to switch around schedules and, you know, at a place of employment, you can do that, but you do affect other people. And so I was, I was just tired of that. So, um, there was one day that I was going to call in and do my nose and I just couldn't do it. And I was really mad at myself because I wanted to do this, but yet I was scared. So I ended up, I think it was a couple of days later, I turned in my notice. And after I did it, like that afternoon especially, I was like, holy crap, what did I just do? And there was a bit of a panic. <laughs> but after that point, there's been things that's just kept happening and happening. And it's really, for me sealed the deal um, about this is what I need to do. This is what I'm called to do. So my income is not just a full-time artist. A lot of people think, I guess, just sits around and draws and paints all day. That is further from the truth. There's a lot of admin type work and stuff of that nature that I'm going to have to work on. But I have always been the type of person that I will work my honey off. I have always, anytime I've got a job, I've worked my honey. There was one job that I got as a 911 dispatcher and I would work 60 hour weeks. Like they would need somebody to come in and work. And I never told them no. And they were 12 hour shifts. And finally, at some points, it got to the point where they told me that I had so many hours, it would be unlawful for me to come in to work and they would have to stop calling me until that pay period was over because I had too many hours. So I'm not, I don't have any intentions of sitting on my tail. Like I will work more for myself than I have for anybody else. I don't, even if I have a day off, I didn't not work. I just, I just have a hard time with that. I don't know. Go figure. So, I think I'm really hopeful and prayerful and I really feel like my heart's in a good place that that this is what I'm meant to be, what, where I'm meant to be and what I'm supposed to do. And, you know, I don't know what the future holds and I can't even say that, you know, I won't ever have to go back to another job. I hope that I don't. And I hope that there there is such crazy growth through this that... I mean, it blows my mind. It blows other people's mind because God's really been convicting me for a long time of doing this. And like I said, I was scared. So, that there we go. That's how I've decided to be a full-time artist. And as far as how my hand is healing post-surgery, I am. I broke my wrist on September the 6th. And I had surgery on September the 9th. And I was in a cast. I got out of the cast. There's my scar. I got out of the cast the second week of October. And it's very slow. Like, I know somebody else who's had the same surgery that I had. And they said that even a year later, they were noticing every day that their wrist was getting better. So, I think it's going to take time. Um, I have a lot of trouble with like squeezing type things and I'm shaking sorry like in the top of my hand right there and I had got a shot whenever I had fell in the top of my hand I think they call it a hema something block and it bled so bad and I'm wondering like I just went to the doctor and had an x-ray because it's still so painful in the palm of my hand like it's not even my wrist that hurts it's inside my hand right there in the palm but I had them do an x-ray and everything looked good so, they said they felt like it was just the stiffness from the surgery. So, I will keep it at it for a day at a time and just draw and 
ice it and prayerfully we will make it through. So I'm going to finish up this little succulent plant. <laughs> and I'm working on some new things. I think I'm going to take a couple of months. Now that I'm, you know, my hand is still recovering and not take any client orders right now. And just really work upon, there's some subject matter that I've been wanting to draw and play with for a while. And I've not had time. Because whenever I was drawing, I was doing orders. So I think I'm going to take several months. I think the first quarter of the year. And just do all these projects that are in my head. And one of those is... Like these little succulent plants and try and make some cards or art prints. Just little artwork. Um, I've got a lot of artwork that I have done that's originals that were not for anybody but for me to put in an exhibit. And so I think I'm going to do those and make some prints of them and sell some art prints. But... Anyway, so I'm going to keep working on this, and thank you guys for coming along with me. This one is a little bit of a chattier version, but I don't know. I just wanted to share with you guys today. So if you enjoyed this, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and um, I'll know to post more content like this in the future. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.